Hi guys and girls and welcome back to the channel. In today's special episode, I'll be interviewing Mr. Akil Stokes, one and only, my coach and one of the best traders that I personally know. So stay tuned. Hi and welcome back everybody. Today we have a special episode of interviews with Forex traders. One of the most successful traders that I actually know. So today I'm welcoming my mentor, one and only Akil Stokes. Hi Akil and thank you for coming here. It's seriously my honor having you live and doing this interview with you. Hey, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. This is a, a pleasure. I, I, love, I love talking trading as you know. So I'm, I'm, I'm excited that you asked me to come on. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, to be honest, I was kind of, um, I, I don't want to say frightened, but I was like thinking, okay, I, I, sh I need to approach him correctly because, you know, <laughs> I sh you shouldn't be one of the first interviews because you got to see that I'm serious about this stuff. Because otherwise, you might, you know, turn me down because it, that's a normal thing to do. So I, I first I put a lot of content out there, uh, probably getting your, atten your attention. And then I said, mm -hmm. okay, it's a week. It, now it's time to you know spread the word. <laughs> yeah, there's there's nothing nothing wrong with that at all. And again, you know I've watched I've watched plenty of your content, so I I know exactly your message, your theme, and and you know for me for me it was a no brainer. Um, I, I know you personally, obviously, and and you know I like doing interviews in, in any way that I can I can help out um, a, a fellow trader. I, I I try to. Yeah, thank you. I really do appreciate it. And as my, as most of my interviews are more like chats, I would also like this one to be as well. How, however, I did prepare some of the questions and so did my subscribers. They were asking me throughout the Instagram, Twitter, and both YouTube channel. Uh, and I hope you'll be able to answer them as we go. Yeah, so of course, shoot them, shoot them at me. <laughs> okay, very good, very good. So basically one of the first, uh, I as probably a lot of my subscribers and a lot of people that I, um, that they, they see, that I see my, uh, can't and know that I'm one of your students, but, uh, so they know how I started that I was struggling for more than three years. And then I found tier one trading, ask a bunch of, bunch of questions. I was one of the most boring, uh, <laughs> uh people in the live rooms, but eventually I did, you know, you did, you, you guys put me on the right start, but how did you start it? I started, uh, really on the opposite side of what I do now. I am a, a technical trader now. Um, but I, I started off really as an investor in the stock market, really focusing on the, the fundamentals. Um, now as I, as I look back at things, I'm not really sure if I knew what I was doing. I was watching the right TV shows, I guess, and reading and subscribing to the right magazines and, and reading the reports that you're supposed to read. But um, again, as I just do a little bit of reflection, I, I think it was more so just doing what I thought you need to do as an investor versus actually doing something beneficial. Um, now, I do think that I had the gift of just common sense. I, I'm, I'm blessed with not the, the sharpest guy out there, but I, I'm blessed with the ability to kind of make the complicated simple, just the way my, my brain works. So I, I was pretty decent at, at picking the right stocks at the, I don't want to say the right moment, because while I was in the stock market, it was, uh, you know, we were kind of right in the beginning phases of the recession. So everything was cheap. So it wasn't too difficult to find a, a, a value price. Um, but I did have a knack and, and, and a big help was from my, uh, my mentor as well at, at picking the right moves. And that's what kind of sparked my interest in the markets. And, and as I did it more, it was first kind of just something I was doing because I had nothing better to do. But as I did it more and as I spent more time in the financial markets, I really started to just fall in love with the process. I, I, I liked it. I was passionate about it. Um, and I ended up making the switch to Forex and eventually technical analysis, mainly because I wanted to take what was a hobby at the time and, and really make it something that could be a career. And of course, my first introduction to Forex was, hey, it's kind of like the stock market, but you can get started with a lot less money and make a lot more money really, really quick. And I was kind of sold on that dream of uh, get rich quick, yeah, get like rich everybody. quickness. And uh, you know, I think I, I wasn't the most humble person back then either. So I figured I'd just pick up and do it right away since I was already that good. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> so tell me, when you first started with the stock market, you were just investing or you, you were first starting with trading? Because I, I somehow, I think I remember that you were mentioning that you were also trying to trade the stocks as well. Yeah, I, I, I was I was an investor, but I would say a very impatient investor. You know, so typically you think of investing and it's like, you know, you, you buy and hold for long periods of time, growth throughout years. Yeah, yeah. I, I approached it like an investor where I would say, this looks good. Because I was just trying to establish a portfolio for my future. So I'd buy something. I like this. I value it. It's cheap. Let's buy it. And the plan would be to hold it for like, you know, I'm going to hold it for years and years and years and collect the dividend and all that fun stuff. But because I had limited funds, so I can only buy so much, uh, and because I had limited patience, it was more of like a, a midterm trader because I was, I was in and out in, of some of these positions within, um, really within months, which, you know, again, now seems like a massive amount of time being an active trader. But as an investor, it's really not a, a long period of time. So I, I did that for a while. And then when I kind of got the the feel of it. And I said, Hey, I'm, I'm good, but I'm not really making that much money because I'm holding stuff for months and I'm making a decent return, but not enough to really live off of or, or, or change my life in any significant type of way. I, I dabbled in the penny stocks because it was, you know, for me, it was the same thing, just cheaper. So I can buy more of it. I can get out of it quicker. I can make more money quicker and then invest that those profits. And, and in my mind, make mm -hmm. a lot of money really, really quick. And, it ended up uh, being the exact opposite, unfortunately. So you you lost a lot a lot of your money on penny stocks. I I, w I wouldn't say I lost a lot. I I, I was smart. I, I didn't kind of go all in with penny stocks, but I I I wasn't successful. It, it was a reality check that it, it wasn't the same thing. And I think mainly because I was invest. I didn't know any of these penny stocks. I was just you know investing in stuff that. I would read about and didn't really know, which kind of broke one of my cardinal sins of investing. Um, one of my one of my big rules of was investing was only only buy stuff you know. So if I'm not personally familiar with it, like I I, did, I never went out into like biotech. I'm just not familiar with that type of stuff. It was only invest in things that you know. That way you're familiar with it. And the penny stocks, I knew nothing about them, but I guess I was kind of blinded by the the make money really really quick part of it. I got it. I know this should this should be a a Forex interview, Forex trading interview, but as I'm also, I just started investing in stocks, by the way, this is my first year. I did invest some of month. I also have one of the videos on the YouTube channel, how I spent $4,000 on stocks. Uh, what, are you still investing in stocks? I am not. Um, I, I not plan at all? to get back. Not at all. Well, not, um, I, I have, I have, I'm not actively investing in stocks. I have accounts that are being managed for me in the stock market. So I do have exposure to, to stocks, but uh -huh. I'm not personally actively investing in them. Um, every year I say I'm going to get back because I, I do want to get back. Um, but the more the education side grows and grows and grows, it just, it's the thing that always gets left out. So it's always make sure my trading is up to par first and foremost, because that tends to kind of take a hit with the teaching. And then obviously it's work with the clients, work with the members to make sure they're on the right track. And, when it comes to investing, I, I, I guess I'm just, I'm, because I don't put in the work needed to make a smart decision or a confident decision, um, I haven't done so. But I should, I should, because I, I am, I, I think we're, we're overdue here um, in the US for a recession. I think a lot of stocks are gonna be very, 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 very cheap. And I yeah, do- A lot of people think that, yeah. I, I, yeah, I need to start preparing when everything's at a bargain sale and, and just, establish some positions then. So I, I, it's something I need to do. I, I just need to, I need to actually invest time in doing it. So yeah, big greedy there when everybody else will be fearful. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Let them be scared and I'll, I'll buy it up. <laughs> and then, yeah. Then, yeah. But five yeah. years later, <laughs> we'll, we'll be doing this interview again and I'll be, I'll be telling you, uh, Man, I'm, about, scared. Uh, I'm not buying that. I'm not buying Apple. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm so scared like a chicken. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, th th those are scary times. But you, you, well, people say, at least for stocks and everybody, every other type of investment, mm -hmm. don't invest money that you're, you're not comfortable losing. And a lot of people are not comfortable losing any money, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, yeah that's, that's a good point. That's, that's true, yeah. yeah that's, that's true. true.
we all like money. Everybody turns, everything turns around money, but however you're, okay, so you do have some kind of the exposure on, uh, on stocks, but I do know that's for a fact, and this is one of the questions here. So guys, so that are watching, uh, we are still on track to do the proper interview about everything that you sent to me. So you are also big on real estate, right? You have some kind of real estate portfolio. This is like some kind of a semi-passive income for you. So tell us a little bit more about that. I have a, a real estate business now. It, it started off as just a, a single investment property. It was actually, it was something my mentor, and my mentor passed um, probably about, how, how old am I kid? My kid's four, so probably about two or three years ago. Um, and he was really, he, he made, Sorry he for made your loss, his career buddy. off of, yeah, thank you. And 90 something years old, so he lived a full, full, full life. So oh yeah, he, he's, happy life. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And one of his main things was to get me into real estate. And I, uh, I purchased my first property. Um, it was an interesting story. Actually, it was right around the time I started investing in stocks. I didn't really have a lot of money and I, I kind of pushed it back because I was scared. Um, I didn't know anything about real estate and he kept saying, this is a good buy. This is a good buy. And I kept not pulling the trigger because I just, I didn't know I was scared. I didn't want to lose money as you just mentioned. Yeah. And <laughs> eventually I did it. Um, I, I was in graduate school simply because I had nothing better to do. And I was tired of telling people that I don't have a job. And I, what I ended up doing was I, I used a loan for graduate school to really get down payment money for my first property. And it was a, a, a multi-unit. So it was, a, it was one house, but split into basically two different apartments. And I lived in one with about three roommates and, and the other one was rented out. So I was essentially living free. The, the rent more than covered the mortgage. Um, How old are you also, at the time? How old are you? This was 20, 2007. So I was probably like 20, 22-ish around oh, then. You're, so you're three. Um, what, I'm 34, 34 right now? Four now, yeah. Or I'm gonna Man, gonna be 34 young. this year. You are young. <laughs> so, My look, body I'm feels old. 30, I'm turning 30 this year. I thought that you're like 40. Nope, nope. <laughs> Maybe the stress of trading makes me look 40. No, 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 not, not because of your mug or anything. <laughs> but I just thought because of the experience and everything. So Jason is actually older than you. Yeah, he yeah he is he is old dog, he's huh? the oldest one. <laughs> and yeah, he, he's the oldest one, and I'm, I'm learning from his experience as well, especially as a father. Um, uh, but yeah, that's that, that's how I got into real estate. It was it was kind of like I was forced into it, and that, and that's that's uh, that's kind of been the theme of my life. Where um, like anyone else, you know, I'm scared to do stuff. Um, Maybe less scared now that I have experience, but like anyone else, I'm scared to pull the trigger on big financial decisions. And usually, it takes kind of like a push in the right direction, and just like something happens, and I do it. And then once I do it, I'm like, well, it's too late. I, I got I to gotta see it out. And um, mm -hmm. that's been big for me. But I, I was essentially living, I was living rent free. I, I actually turned a, turned a profit at the, at the end of each month. And it was a, a very beneficial situation. And what I ended up doing is because I don't, I'm not a fan of real estate the same way I am trading. I, I, am, I am passionate about trading. I, I love coming in and looking at the markets each day. Uh, real estate, and I'll, I'll take a quote from my, my late mentor, Real estate is agony. Um, when you're doing it all by yourself, it is. It's you're you're dealing with tenants, and they always they never call you for anything good. It's uh, always so you fix this. Tenants, fix you didn't that. have a management company. Fast yeah, forward not, today. Uh huh. No. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. Back then, it was. Hey, if I, if I get a call from a tenant, it's either something's broken or rent's not going to be here. Right. And then, like you know, I, I've had to go through the eviction process many times. Wow. Which yeah, is, that that's very bad. Yeah inspections and I just I just hated it and I remember putting a call out to a group of my friends because you know this was still before I, I really started seeing trading success and and I was saying hey you know if we just kind of you know we all get together in a group and we put our money together we can get another property like this and kind of like the that that type of deal and really only about two of them um, and I'd say one and a half even um, follow through and was serious. So we went through a time where we tried to start a business and people just started falling off and were non-committal. And I ended up uh, partnering with, with two of my friends and, and one of them doesn't really do too much, but um, this is a bad business decision. He's my best friend and you know, he's done a lot for me throughout his life. So, and anyone else, um, I would have booted him out, um, but I kind of keep him uh -huh. on because of that. 
um, which again, isn't a smart business decision, but you know, I, I fully accept that and I'm okay with it. Um, but we started, we, we turned, uh, we started a real estate business as well. So I, I still have personal properties, um, but we started a real estate uh, business as well. And that way we can kind of split the load between, um, you know, searching for properties and the maintenance of properties. We do have property managers now, um, <laughs> which makes life a heck of a lot easier. Um, but it really allows me to be hands off and, and, and still kind of reap the, the benefits with limited amount of stress and agony. Right. So uh, r around that time, you also started a Forex trading. You, you were learning penny stocks. You were learning about penny stocks. You, you said that you were starting your investing. Your mentor got you to buy that. So around you're 34 right now, you're turning 34. Yep. How long have you been profitable? When did you start learning Forex? Or what, what year was that? I had to start learning Forex, I want to say late, mid or late 2008, I think is when I first got interested Ten years in Forex. Of, yeah, yeah, same, yeah. Um, Ten years might have been 2009, but somewhere, somewhere around that time is when I made the transition. I, I did about a year and a half, two years of stocks, um, just, just stocks purely. Mm -hmm. I, I still dabbled in stocks while I started doing Forex, but I think it was, I think it was probably mid 2008 or maybe early 2009 when I really got started in, in Forex. And again, how, the re, how did you the re, start it? How did you start it? <laughs> um, as, as far as like getting involved, it's like the, the Yeah, the yeah. Well, did you open like, okay, I'm going to open a brokerage. I'm going to put a deposit and okay. First quick uh, strategy, YouTube search. Here we go. 500 bucks each and every day, hundred percent returns. <laughs> let's get rich because that's how I started. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's, that was pretty much it. It was, I yeah. opened the account. I, I, I did tell myself or like, I, I, I think I initially told myself, I'm going to learn for like, you know, cause I, when I started YouTubing stuff, this was the first time I, I ever knew about technical analysis. I knew zero about it. So I started, you know, YouTube uh -huh, searching uh -huh. Forex trading and there's all these candlesticks. I'm like, Whoa, this is a, this is a completely different world. Um, so I did spend some time on, on YouTube, uh, me and my buddy that introduced me, we ended up buying this DVD set. It was like probably like a hundred dollar DVD set. We split it half and half. And I remember just, you know, we're, we're in the, in the, in the bottom of uh, the bottom room of our apartment, whatever like that. And we're just, you know, we're watching it, taking notes and the guys, you know, just, this is a candlestick. And I'm like, Oh yeah. Awesome. Um, <laughs> Bravo. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, I'm, you know, I'm all excited. I'm like, I'm like, I'm already awesome. This is just gonna make me better. And we did that. We started watching YouTube videos. And of course, when you watch a lot of YouTube videos, then the most of the stuff you come across is like the, you know, to get rich quick scheme. And, and that's what yeah, I had, of course, yeah. had the goal of like, you know, I'm going to make 20 pips a day and yep. I'll just make 20 pips a day every day. That'll be like 60 pips a month. And then you, you, yep. you that's times that much, by right? 12 20 pips a day, 600 pips per month. That's not it, much. It, I can do go. Yeah. 600. Yep. Exactly. And then you're a millionaire in like seven years. I think I did like the calculation. I'm like, I'll just be oh, a millionaire, I was a millionaire years. faster than seven years. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and then I, of course I, I kind of broke my rule. I, I don't, I forget how long I was supposed to be on the sideline and learn. Um, but once I started getting into it and like opening a demo account, and I always call myself the demo account king. To this day, I don't believe I ever lost a demo account trade. And it's probably because I wasn't using stop losses. I would just wait till it came back in my favor. But um, I never lost. A demo, yeah. Exactly, yeah. And so I'm looking at this demo. I'm like, man, I just made this much money this month with demo money. I should be doing this with live money. And I'd, I'd throw in some live money and I would just lose everything, right? Not lose everything, but I, I would lose a significant amount right away. And I'd be like, okay, I got to go back to demo learn the next strategy. And I keep repeating <laughs> the process of like learning this new strategy, feeling like that was the one demo trading it being yeah. awesome with demo trading, getting sick and tired of demo trading and, and wasting money, trading live, losing, blaming the system, going to the next strategy. And I, I, I probably did that cycle for the good part of a year um, before I finally decided, like I, I stumbled across a trading mentor and was like, let's, let's kind of get educated the right way. Cause this isn't, this isn't working. Were those, were those strategies at least rule based or they were like, did you do properly back test or anything or you, no. how did that go? Because what I did is just basically I found a guy who I, I was doing internet marketing before I had a internet marketing company who was doing mm -hmm. actually pretty decent. And uh, then I met a guy, then I met, I coached a, another friend of mine from Croatia. And uh, so then he turned to Forex and then he coached me. And the, the simple strategy was like a bunch of indicators, RSI, stochastics. I don't know. I had Bollinger Bands. I have multiple <laughs> Bollinger Bands, all of that bullshit. And then, <laughs> then when, when a big ass candle on one minute chart 
mm -hmm. goes through, I don't know, with the third Bollinger Band, you got to sell. But you got to be really <laughs> quickly. Only if you have a, some kind of a shark pin on the RSI. And the RSI is lagging indicator. And then after, when I would skip the trade, it would be a proper trade. And for me, the back testing was like going back and uh, finding five trades. For example, look mm -hmm. look at my chart. Like, yeah, uh, yeah, this one I wouldn't take. I don't know why because I feel them. I feel like it. I wouldn't take this one. Oh yeah, I would take definitely. I would take this one <laughs> because this would make me a ton of money. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah. Let's trade live. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. was my part of me beginning. How was yours? That, that was pretty similar, except for I, I didn't even do the back testing part. I, I knew nothing about back testing. I would. I would just, I would read up and a lot of it was indicator based at first and it would, it would you know, I'd add an indicator and then I'd be like, okay, well, let's, let's add a, another indicator on top of that for extra yeah, confirmation. Yeah. <laughs> and then before you know it, you know, I'd five or six indicators and I, I'd have lines drawn in from like dailies and weeklies and yeah. um, it was bad, but, but I, I did nothing. I just thought I knew it. Um, I did nothing to actually, I knew nothing about price action. I, I, I did nothing to actually test if what I was doing was correct. Um, I would just, I would just go out and do it because I guess I just thought success would be, I thought it was easy. I think it was a combination of everyone telling me, telling me it was that easy. And again, just the success I had in the stock market made me think that, you know, I, I got this and you know, I, I had no rhyme or re looking back, I had no rhyme or reason for doing anything that I did. It was just kind of like, I learned something new. This is cool. Let's try it. Oh, it worked like the, the mm. two weeks I did it on demo and probably like you, I'd only pick like the winners and, and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah. I trade it live and then it, it wouldn't work and I get frustrated and I'd revenge trade and, and just, it was just a, a consistent cycle of that. And it was, it was just bad. It was just bad. It's embarrassing. Um, <laughs> but it was just bad. Yeah. So, so you started to you find yourself a mentor. Was that, was that a Jason Stapleton? Was that a tra trade empowered or still not? Yes. Um, the name wasn't trade empowered back then. This was when Jason had just got started. It was um, Forex Traders Live. But yeah, I, on, on one of my many internet searches, because I was unemployed at the time, um, uh -huh. Uh -huh. another dumb decision, but um, I would just you know surf the internet all day and I ended up reading an article in, in FX Trader Magazine and it was by him about... He had won this trading competition and 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 was so great. And of course, at the end, you know, for you know, Jason said at the end, I would never do this with live money. He's like, the way I was trading was super aggressive, simply based um, on trying to get the most results for the trading competition. And of course, I ignored that part. I'm just like, oh, this dude turned this into this in like three <laughs> weeks. This is awesome. And I went to his site and he had something called a trader assessment and I, I filled it out and I'm like, you know, I just filled it out cause I had nothing better to do. I'm like, this guy's never going to call me or answer me. It's just, I'm going to get oh, yeah. this is basically a capture form. Yeah. This is a capture form and you were on a sales exactly. call afterwards. Yeah. Yep. And you know, I, I did that. And to my surprise later that night, he called me and uh, it's weird cause I, this is how you knew it was kind of, kind of fate because I, I don't pick up numbers. I don't know. Um, uh -huh. I just, I don't do that at the time. You know, I'm like, it's, it's, uh, a spam or, or, you know, someone, a bill collector, what did I not pay? And, and, and <laughs> something I, I looked at it and that night I was just like, ah, let me answer that. And it was, it was Jason and he, he went over the, the trader assessment with me, my answers. And he really just led me. I mean, I just, I trapped myself cause it was, it was questions about how am I trading? What am I doing? And, and kind of like what we just talked about. He'd be like, well, how do you know there's a trade? And I'd be like, well, sometimes and maybe, and, and you know, this big candle here. And you're like, okay, well, well, how do you know that it's a breakout? Well, you know, when it gets above. I'm like, well, when it gets above or closes above? And I'm like, well, it has to, you know, sometimes close above. And well, how many pips? <laughs> and he just, like, he was so, he was so calm. He wasn't aggressive with it. He was basically just letting me, letting me destroy myself. And, and <laughs> yeah. at the very end, as like, I ran out of excuses, I'm like, defeat it. He, was, he just kind of said, he's like, you don't have any rules, do you? And I was like, no, <laughs> I, just, I just had to accept it. And I think that was the first time, um, the first time I realized, and it took someone else telling me, obviously, that I really didn't know what I was doing. Um, uh -huh. And I, I wasn't necessarily off. Um, like I, I, you know, he, he wasn't telling me like, hey, you're an idiot, you're trading bad. I just didn't have any consistency. There was no rules or, or, or reason for what I was doing. And um, 
he brought that out of me. And then of course he asked me to join. He said, Hey, I've got this training program. Um, I don't even want to talk about price or anything like that. Just come in with the live room for a week. Let me show you how I trade in a rules-based way. And I ended up checking out the, um, his live trading room for a little bit. And then you started. Yeah. Yeah. I, I started. He said, he said, come here for a week. I, I, I swear, um, swear to God, it was after day one. You knew you I, were going I, to join him. I, I called him, but he tried to not sell it to me. After day one, I called him back. I'm like, I want in. He's like, look, he said, look, try it out for a week first. I, mean, I know you're excited. Try it out for a week. I said, no, because I just, I saw the way he operated. It was, it was very, being a former athlete, I, I understand kind of discipline and, and rules and, and, and do your job. And he's military. So he was the same way yeah. where it's like very strict. And right away, I was like, this is what I need. Like I need, I need a coach to tell me what to do and what not to do um, and just lead me in that direction. And I said, you know, I don't, I don't want to waste any time. I, I want in right now. Um, well, you kind of, with what you, sorry, with what you said here, basically kind of answered what was your biggest aha moment, which is basically rule-based strategy. That's what I can read from your answers here mm -hmm. because yeah. Am I right? Yeah. 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 And that was it. That was the, the truth. Akil, that is one of the reasons why I was like, uh, I was, I found you online, you and Jason. And first, one of the first videos that I saw from you was mm -hmm. like, back then I was about to get very, very rich with trading Forex in very, very <laughs> short period of time. And here you are, uh, you were in that, in your, for, in trade empowered already coaching people. Mm -hmm. And uh, you are saying me some kind of stupidity, <laughs> sarcasm mm -hmm. guys, like you made like 500 pips profit and then you are okay with giving that profits back and you're showing me your equity curve and I'm, here I am thinking, look at this fool, man, and he can make so much <laughs> money. Now he's okay with giving profits back to the market. <laughs> and now he's telling me like he can win 3% per, per month. Is he crazy, man? I can make that each and every day. And here <laughs> I am now happy with just 2% per month. But yeah, when I joined tier one, I was like scammed multiple times, you know, mm -hmm. got all of these schools and everything. And the thing that I was missing is a live example of how people are trading because i've never seen i've only seen recordings i've only seen theories we bought we are buying here we are selling there only screenshots nothing real time nothing pre-market analysis nothing post-market nothing what you're supposed to do nothing live and then when i joined i was like in in every live room with jason and you in both mm -hmm. of the live rooms and i've seen like you guys you show how it is and you, you are the first people that I believe that they're profitable without showing me the, my, my FX book. Yeah. Because I see how you approach the markets. And then I finally realized this, dude, you had no rules. You were like in each and every trade, you like you, 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 you were trading based on your feeling. There, there are no feelings. And then I just started, okay, so I got to do a lot of work. And the rule-based approach is something that I needed. And I actually believe that a lot of people need that as well because yeah. it, Forex is simple. It's very easy, but I mean, simple, mm -hmm. but hard. That's, yeah. that's my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. I, I always say simple, simple, not easy. The concepts yeah, are simple, not easy. Simple. Exactly. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Doing it and getting your, your mind in, in the right way to do it is it's, it's, it, it, that's the tough part. Uh, that's the really tough part. Yeah. Yeah. So what are you, what are you doing now, man? So you're obviously a coach at the tier one trading company guys. Mm -hmm. I got to give, uh, because Akil would do it here right now. Uh, selfless plug because yes. these guys are the, like I'm on my channel. I'm not getting paid for this, but I have to tell you the tier one trading.com, uh, go ahead, uh, purchase one buck trial, and take a look for 14 days. I've seen now where you're getting this from, Akil, because Jason got you in his program without mm -hmm. trying not to sell it. That's what you're trying there. And what I thought that you are doing with one buck trial is that then you build them automatically after 14 days. But this is not correct. So guys, for one buck, you get 14 days of opportunity, live rooms and all of the offers and all of that cool stuff. And you get to see how a pro trader trades live. And then you can decide will you join the monthly or not. But this is what I would 
where I'm directing everybody who asks me anything about trading, just go there. This is what you can expect. This is real. Nothing else is as real as this is. So tell us a little bit more, Akil. Now, you know, sell away, sell away, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm, I'm a horrible salesman, but uh, yeah, it's what you mentioned. I mean, we just, we believe in, and I've always believed in just say a, let your product be the proof for you. Um, you know, I, I always say I'm not, I'm not a great business businessman. I'm not a great salesman because I, I feel guilty about kind of doing hard sales. And I used to listen to people like Grant Cardone and, and I don't know if you're familiar with him, but he's kind of in your face, like 10 X it, do this, do that, buy Ooh, that. Grant, yeah, I, am, um, I, am. I know everybody who were on a 10 X conference. Yeah. I'm a, I was an online marketer. I had oh, to okay. sell. Yeah. I was selling on, I was selling on a, phone to mm -hmm. high ticket products and all of that stuff yeah 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 and, and there's and i don't think there's anything wrong with that it's just I, it doesn't fit me right um just just my personality and you know and that's one of the reasons i i partner with 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 people that also have different views you know jason graystone's willing to be a little bit more out there with with the sales and whatnot believe it or not i'm actually i, I prefer not to I prefer to to kind of float under the radar. I don't necessarily want my face on YouTube and 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 this and that. I I just like to trade and teach people. Um, but I understand that you know in order to grow the business, you guys need to see kind of me and my personality. And, I, and I'm okay with that. But it's just not my. I don't really like the spotlight. Um, but yeah, I, I just believe in in if you in business, if you have a great product. Um, People need to be made aware about it, about it, but it doesn't need to be sold. And my theory is that like with the 14 day trial and there's no rebuild on that, it just, it cancels when you're done. Um, just allow me, allow us to prove ourselves. You know, we give you 14 yep. days on the platform, meet our community, see what we have the offer as far as the, the emergence course and the, and the, the daily trading videos and the live rooms and, and, and accountability sessions, all that fun stuff and see if it's the right fit for you because that that does make a difference it's one thing to have a a trading coach or trading coaches that are knowledgeable about the market but like any coach right the, it has to be a right fit with the player and if my style of trading if my style of teaching isn't the right fit for you um, i could be the greatest trader the greatest coach in the world but it won't necessarily benefit you so um we just want to give people a chance to see what we have the offer. And if it fits and it works for them, they feel like it's the right place. Um, then we look forward to working with them. If not, hopefully they learn something that they can take uh, in the future and as they continue their trading journey. Right. And I have this, like, I know so you're teaching a lot of people. I know this is your passion, but also a fair argument from uh, people looking outside in is, you know, man, you, you seem shady. Why, why are you teaching people if you're making so much money, right? Yeah. And the answer to that is just, I just love teaching. Um, I actually had this conversation yesterday in, in a Q&A session we did. And we were talking about my experiences managing money. And I just, I hated it. Um, oh, you were I managing loved, money? Yeah, I, I hated it. Um, my, my first, the first business I made out of trading, because we we're talking about, I always say that you need a massive amount of money to go trading full time, meaning just like pure P and L full time living just off your trading profits. You need a lot of money. Yeah, I have one of the questions here also: how how big the account you need to uh, to trade full time? I know we were discussing this on a Twitter the other day, but uh, can you now the sweet question would be for this: uh, how much if you're not under NDA or something, not disclosure agreement? Can you share mm -hmm. how much money were you managing? Yeah, I, I was managing about total of about three hundred thousand um, dollars. Yeah, and, and it was it was a long uh, it was a, it was a it was a long long journey, lots of no's to get to that amount. But fortunately, um, I did fall or come across one invest one big investor that said yes. I had a few small fish in there, um, but I came across one big investor that ended up saying yes, and I was managing money, and that's how I started my trading business because my my personal account wasn't big enough. I think I started after I'd blown a lot of money, I started under $10,000. So I think my plan was to start with 10,000. I think I ended up starting with like 7,000. So it wasn't necessarily enough to, you know, you can't live off of that type of trading profit. Yeah. What was your especially expected you realize, return? Uh, I was like, sure. especially when you realize 20 pips a day, every day, is it, is it the truth? Um, yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> so I started managing money and I started getting income basically from collecting management fees and uh, a type of commission, you know, legally, I'm not supposed to call it commission, but I guess it doesn't matter now. It was a type of commission um, from managing that, that money. And what happened was I, I just hated it. It was, and par it was partially my fault. I was young. Um, I was kind of bowing down to the main investor, meaning that in my mind, I needed to have this business. I needed his money in order to make a living. So mm -hmm. instead of being stern and, and being like, hey, this is how I trade. This is how I'm going to do it. Mind your business. You'll get a, a quarterly P&L and that's it. Instead of saying something like that, he was very hands-on. He, he wasn't an investor. And you'll find a lot of people like that, that want people to manage their money, but they also want to be hands-on. So he was consistently watching constantly watching the news and, and I don't know if he's watching charts, but I would get calls like every day or emails like, Hey, heard this about the Euro dollar. Are you selling? And I, and I would be in a buy position based on my rules. And I'd be like, well, no, I'm buying because of, you know, a return to structure support. It's like, are you sure? Because CNBC is saying this, I think you really should be buying. And I was very heavily influenced <laughs> by what, what making him happy, meaning what he wanted to do versus following my plan. And uh -huh. like anything else, I, I would, you know, eventually I would, I would start doing stuff where I'd, I'd close my open position and I'd get in a position the way he wanted so I can report to him and be like, yeah, I bought the Euro. And then it would end up losing and going up. And I'd be like, darn it. Like I, that was my original trade. And I just, yeah. I took it out for no reason. And it was that stress of finding that, not only finding that balance between pleasing him and trying to stick to my rules. And, and as you can imagine, trading, Trading demo is, is difficult. Trading your live money is 10 times difficult. Trading someone else's live money is 100 times more difficult. Yeah. So that psychological balance was tough. Um, so it was that and long, just... Sorry, for uh, how long did you do this? How, how, with, I, I did this for about... On those 300,000 per year. I did this for about a year total. His, his money was less than a year, but I, I managed money for a year total. Um, wow. Short period of time. Sure. Yeah. I, yeah. Um, so how much did got, you return? So what was after I, you gathered? I was averaging three, sorry. I was averaging 3% a month. Oh, wow. That's good. Which is that, that was my, my goal was too. And I was reporting to him every, and, and here's how I got into the biggest trouble. This is kind of my, the, the big story that people love to hear, which, which, which I hate telling, but I guess it's great. <laughs> um, but okay. so I was, I was making two to 3% a month, which I was quite happy with. Um, and that's what I told him. And, 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 you know, in the initial presentation, I'm like, Hey, you know, I'm going to try and make you like 2% a month, minimum, minimum drawdown. I'll, I'll keep the max drawdown under 10%. So you never, you know, I, I never lose more than 10% of your money, whatever like that. I think it was like 8%, but I said 10, um, to give myself a little breathing room. Yeah, yeah. And I was doing good and I was quite happy. You know, at the end of the end of the months, uh, you know, I was like, yeah, I'm, you know, this is good. I'm at 3%. I'm at 4%. I have a little cushion for the drawdown to come. I, I felt prideful and there was a positive outlook like this is what i'm going to do for the rest of my life this is this is cool and he'll tell his his rich friends that i did a good job and i'll get I more money from money. them and then they'll tell their rich friends and before you know it you know i'll be managing a massive amount of money and and you know i'm just adding the commissions up in my head and management fees and i would report back to him very prideful i'm like hey man did another three percent in september right you know and i would get responses back like well, that's all. Huh? And I'm like, I'm like, what do you mean? That's all. He's like, he's like, well, couldn't you get more? Like I saw the, I saw the Euro tanked and fell off a cliff. How come you didn't catch all of that move or how come you didn't get more? And I'll explain to him, Hey, the number one rule of trading is risk management. You know, my goal is to trade a small enough position size so that, you know, yeah, we, we capture profits off of the wins, but when the drawdown comes, you know, we don't, we don't put a dent into the account at all. We can kind of just brush it off. He's like, yeah, but if you're on a hot streak, shouldn't you be increasing the position size during the hot streak? And it was those type of conversations. And eventually I caved in. I remember it was after a few months of, of, of like a, a few months of a hot streak. I think it was like three or four straight months of like just returning three, four percent. And we kept having these conversations month after month. You're leaving money on the table and all this stuff. He's like, I, I want you to I want you to like quadruple the position size. And I was like, I don't think that's a good idea. Like I'm on a hot streak. Usually after hot streaks come losing streaks. Like I'm, I'm, I'm outperforming even thought I, even what I thought I would do. And you know, I, I, again, I want to make sure to manage the risk when that losing streak comes like, no, 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 just do it. Just do it. 
And in my head, again, in, instead of shutting them down and saying like, no, I'm not doing it, um, I'm like, okay. And of course, you can kind of guess what happened next. I, yeah, I like triple our position size right in time for a massive drawdown. Holy shit. Did you blow and it all? I didn't lose it all, but it was about, I lost about $30,000 within like a week. Um, wow. How and, much you were up? Like uh, he, absolute amount. How much in, in dollars? I don't, I don't even know at that point. I, it had to be about, I was averaging, I think like three to 4% at this point. The hot streak was like four months, three to four months. So um, what's, what's that? Uh, 12, 48, 50 grand. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Probably about that much. Yeah. Now, obviously the majority majority of that was his because he, he he had the biggest that was the biggest account i was Holy managing crap, you blew more than 50 percent of that you made yeah and and the worst part was two things that were bad one i, I only charged off of new equity high so i i only collected a check wow. when i made new equity highs so right then i'm like there's no like i don't know when i'm gonna get to a new equity high i'm not gonna be able to collect a check for you know i'm thinking like half a year because i'm not gonna make fifty thousand back um, in a couple of months, like, I mean, and that was one thing, right. It was like a, like I was scared. Um, another thing is I, I, I mentally got into a bad place and I stopped trading for a week and I, I was overexposed. This is where it's my fault. I was overexposed on yen pairs. And I think there was a, um, a natural disaster. I think it was like a tsunami maybe, uh, that happened and all the yen pairs tanked. And I was, I was, I had positions going all the same direction and, you know, I just got beaten to death in yen pairs, very, very bad. but the next week I had quit trading for a week cause I was just in a very bad place. Um, I was like, this is, it's over. Like, I'm, how am I going to pay the bills now? Um, and I saw that when I came back a week later, I'm like, you know, I pulled myself together. You got this appeal winners win all this fun stuff. Um, I saw that if I would have just traded my plan, all of the end pairs rebounded and I would have made double what I lost back. So if I lost $30,000 in that, week or two week span, I would have made 60,000 back. If I just would have stuck to the Seriously, trade. in that one week. Yeah, it was, it was, again, it had to be, it was some type of natural disaster. And just imagine I was trading like 60 N pairs, which I had no idea about diversification back then. It was just, those were the ones that performed best in my back testing, um, in, in my live trading. And they all just did the same thing. They all just tanked at the same time. And then like, they all just recovered. You've seen the candles before, right? Big red candle. And then yeah, like yeah, yeah. over the next week, they all come back. And my, my system at the time would have captured, it was a momentum based system. It would have captured that move and it would have captured that move on six pairs. And you know, cool. just obviously my, I, I keep quality risk reward ratios. I would have made like 60,000 back. And that was, that was when I, that's when I just shut down. Um, after that point, like mentally I was done. I was like, this is, this is too much. This sucks. Yeah, it, not, it was too much. <laughs> yeah. So what, how did you, how did you, you, you turned out your biggest investor, you will, uh, psychologically at a time you were broken, uh, uh, pardon me for saying, but probably you were right. I would be. Oh yeah. 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 So how did you raise up like a Phoenix and how did you start trading your own big account for, so that you can live off of it? Or did you work part-time to fund the account? How did, how did Akil become Akil? Well, after, after I, I was still trading his account for, I didn't just quit after that. I, I was still trading the account for a little bit after that. And the story gets worse, if you can imagine. But I, at the time I was working, what? I was working just a single, just a single part-time job. I don't, I don't know how much I was getting a year, 10,000, 15,000, something like that. Um, and it was, it was helpful. Obviously it's not, it's not life changing. So I was still managing money. I collected a good amount of profits from the success that I did have. And I'm not, I'm not dumb with money. So, you know, I, I always put that kind of in a rainy day fund and I continued trading his money for a little bit longer and then something even worse happened. And I'm, I'm continuing to invest some into my own account as well. So I'm growing my, my 7,000 account, $7,000 account, you know, larger and larger and larger. Uh -huh. And then something worse happened. Um, after that, um, I had, a, uh, my account was with uh, a broker named PFG. I, I hadn't, uh, well, I had an introducing broker, but the main account was with a broker PFG and they had, um, they had basically stolen everyone's money. Right now at this time I, I, I had just got started in education as well. So I was teaching, um, because I was looking to phase out of, of managing money and I, and I started teaching, but I didn't really take it seriously. I was just kind of like, I need money from another source uh, to be successful. Um, 
But when I, when I, when someone shot me the email and I looked at it and I called them up and we realized this guy stole all the money from the account, that was the absolute rock bottom moment. Um, so your private money, the, the 10 grand that you had and his money as well? Yeah, the, the majority of his money. Again, I, I was slowly phasing out of, of, of managing money, but a good chunk of his money was, um, <laughs> was lost as well. Um, we did get some of it back years later after the, the lawsuit settlement, whatever like that, but I'm, I'm talking 5% max. Um, Holy shit. And, Hundreds of thousands of dollars were stolen. Yeah, and it was at that moment when I decided to take um, – education seriously I, I did grow to love it but again it was always kind of secondary because it wasn't really it, it was you know it was supplemental income but it wasn't anything significant um but I, I did grow to love it and that at that moment I decided hey I, I've got to take this education thing seriously because you know I, I need a backup plan as well you know I, I was confident in you know once I get another account up and running I can I can make money again um but that was kind of my first experience with, if, if you want to call it being scammed or whatnot, it was you know, not the same scam as like people scamming money on the internet, but in a way it was, it was a place that, that took the majority of my money right when I was kind of at like the, I was trading at my best. I mean, let's, let's put it that way. Um, Cause I, I had bounced back from the little money management thing. And I was, I was trading really good and just another kind of just punch to the face. Um, so and one, one, one story real quick that a lot of people don't know, this was probably the stupidest decision I made, but I did repay, um, not everything, but I repaid, I repaid the clients that I, that I managed money for. I, I repaid them essentially all of their money. Why? I just, I felt that was the right thing to do Obviously, again, business, 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 you know, business wise, stupid decision. Cause it, it took years. Um, it took yeah. years, but it was the right thing to do. We had clauses in the contract and everything that were like, you know, they know the risk of trading and blah, 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 blah. This can happen. It wasn't of my fault at all. Uh, but just as a person, as a person, I, I felt that, hey, these guys took a chance on me. They allowed me to grow a business when, when no one else did take a chance. Um, I just thought it was the right thing to do. And I, 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 I do to this day, again, I w- I'll admit that from a business perspective, it's, the, it's a, a dumb decision. Um, but as a person, it, it was the right thing. Yeah, I think I'm like that as well. I, also, although I would probably fight myself, I would probably do the same thing because I value my, as a person, things more than the business stuff. It, mm-hmm. You know, I, that, that's just how I am. But anyway, so you're starting a teaching business. That, does that mean that you're joining, uh, joining Trade Empowered and then you're st- starting to pour? Are you still trading on the side or you don't have any account? How are you living? Because currently for a living, as I remember you mentioned on the Twitter, you, uh, you need at least $200,000 account and currently you're living off of your trading, right? Yeah, I was, I was, I had, I had started working with Trade Empowered that year. So this had to be 2012, I want to say. Uh huh. Um, yeah, and I started working with Trade Empowered that year. I was asked to come on, and 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 I was actually asked previously, and I I declined them. They're like, we need, you know, we, we'd like you to come and coach and and teach and whatnot. And I was like, I'm not interested at all. This is when I was managing money. And then he asked later that year, and this was kind of after that big incident. And I was like, yeah, okay. Okay, you know, again, I was looking, I was looking for reasons to phase out of managing money because I was really frustrated with it. And uh-huh. I said, okay, let's let's give it a try. So I was I was teaching with them, um, and that was giving me. So I was making income from the teaching. I was making income from my own personal trading. I was making income from managing money. So there was and, and there was real estate as well, which wasn't making too much, but it was making a little bit. Um, so there was income streams coming from all these different places. And then once the incident happened with my personal account and, and, and managing money, obviously that was, that was out the door and it was, it was only the education. And that's when things got kind of dark for uh, a little bit. Um, again, I, had to, I started sending out resumes. I wasn't sure if, um, you know, if trading would be an option yep. in the future. I loved it, um, but it just wasn't, at the time, it wasn't realistic. I was a little bit scared to start a new account knowing that, I just had all of mine taken from me. Um, but I, I, I persevered. I, I ended up reloading a trading account um, and really just starting over 
from scratch. Um, unfortunately, we did. I think we did. A, we had a, a big sale um, with the with the education thing, and, and there was a, a nice chunk of money that came in. And I said, okay, let's let's put that back in the trading account. And let's you know be fearless and start not not all of it, obviously, but let's let's put a a, a good amount back in the the trading account. Let's get started and let's kind of just let's just build up from from where I was at and and, and try this thing again. Um, so but it was it was a major setback. You compounded the the account back then from the money that you uh, you made a, that bigger chunk of money from the trading sale that you got, and then yes. you compounded it. Did you use it? Did you took out each and every month, or you just compounded it? Compounded it well uh, until it grew uh, big enough so that you can live solely from your trading. Because I believe that right now you can actually you do educational things as well. Because mm -hmm. you love it, you're passionate, but I, I believe that you can live off of your trading and your trading account solely. I, 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 would, I wouldn't be comfortable right now. I, I probably could, but I wouldn't be comfortable doing it right now, um, living wow, solely off my trading account. Say congrats. Why not? I'm, I'm always, I don't want to say I'm, I'm, I'm I, I guess I am, I'm always cautious. So I, I always expect, I always expect the worst. Um, that's one, that's one thing. And maybe it, it does come from being burnt by a broker, um, that I, I'm, I'm never too comfortable having everything in one place. Um, just from that experience. So I, I do have fears of keeping more than a certain amount in any, in any given account. Um, also I've gotten, and then I guess this decision would have been, would have been different if I weren't doing education was once that, uh, once I was back in a comfortable place where I, I was comfortable um, with my income, I, I can live without, you know, worrying about paying for bills and all that stuff. Yeah. I started investing very heavily in real estate. Um, so a lot of the money that I would previously put back into my trading account. So what, what I would essentially do is I, I would take, I would try not to take any profit from my trading account unless I had to. Ideally, I would roll 100% of it over into my trading account and, and, and live simply off of the education. And this was, you know, at the time, again, I didn't have any, I had a, a fiance, uh, but I, no kids. No, we were still living in, yeah, in the apartment. Yeah. So the bills were, were minimal. I, I, I could survive off of like probably 20000 a year if I needed to, um, which here is very minimum. But I wanted to get, th looking for the, uh, towards the future, um, for me, my, my biggest investment in the future was real estate. Um, for me, that, that's the biggest thing that I want to establish is a, a, a real estate empire um, because that's a lot, in a way, it's a lot safer than trading. And it's also something more legacy related where I, can't, I, I can pass on the skill of trading um, to my sons if, if they decide to do it. Doesn't necessarily mean that they'll be good at it or able to replicate what I do. Um, if I have an established real estate empire, meaning you know uh, rentals and houses that are paid for, it's a lot easier for me to pass that down and say, Hey, here's something that's solid. It's already producing income. All you have to do is take over the business. Um, so I forgot what year it was, but once I was financially able to, I started fully investing in, in growing kind of my real estate empire. And a lot of the money that I would use for trading ended up going into uh, buying houses with cash or just making substantial down payments on properties. Wow. Okay, that's right. That even that even go, going into debt as well. You know, there are certain properties where it's like, hey, I'll max out the credit card because you gotta, I gotta move quick and use that for a property and then just repay it later. Right, but okay, I I understand. But the, somehow the trading and your trading journey got you to the point where you have something to leave to your kids to leave the, um, how do you call this in English? I'm sorry, English is not a legacy to your business. Yeah. So mm -hmm. what type of trader are you actually, you know, so you back tested a bunch of stuff, but you, you had, as every trader has, has to find, you have to find your own style. What that style of trading would be. I'm a, a technical trader. So I use uh, right technical analysis to funny little candlestick things. If, if any of the listeners are not familiar, but I, I, I consider myself a price action and structure trader. Um, if there's, if there's one main thing that is the, the center of my trading philosophy, it is structure. Um, I believe uh -huh. in the power of structure, so support and resistance. Um, it is key in any 
any trading decision I make as far as stop losses should be in a place where they are beyond structure. Target should be at a place of previous structure. Um, so that is, that is the, the center of my trading philosophy. I, I, I'm counter trend at heart. Um, it doesn't mean that I only take counter trend trading situations. I do take situations that, uh, that align with the trend, but I'm not a trend following trader. So I'm not someone that looks to hop on the trend and, and really ride it until it's over. I approach even my trend continuation trades with a, a counter trend type of approach where, um, I'm seeing dollar Canada go up on your screen. That's awesome. I'll, I'll, I'll approach it with, um, where I'll try to hop in, I'll, I'll try to get involved in the, in the trade. No, 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 uh, no, 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 Do not dollar Canada. Oh, what was dollar that Canada is falling. It's pound dollar. Oh, pound dollar. Okay, it actually, work. sorry for this, but it actually took me out today. I mean, I'm pissed, but that happens. Uh, look, yeah. it took my, and now it's reversing and probably would hit, would, would hit my would be targets too. I, I, I was in the same exact trade. It took me out to a pip, I think. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, we're watching this morning. Jason Grace I was like, "Come on, baby!" I'm like, oh, "Whatever." Uh, so he's not out of the trade. No, he he's in it. I know he got he got in a little bit later. So I don't know if his if his stop losses were were different. But he's maybe diff different broker. I don't know what do you guys use. I know that you don't advertise this, but yeah, maybe that could be a thing. I, I'm out. Yeah, I know. I know that. I'm out like to the pip. Yeah. Um, but yeah, technical trader. So it structures everything. Even in trend continuation situations, I I approach it more like a counter trend trader where I'm looking for the first level of danger. Um, so I'm a very, I'd like to say I'm a very cautious trader when it comes to profits and, uh, profits and stops. Um, I, I like to keep my stop losses small and safe. I like to keep my targets um, small and safe as well. So I very rarely do I shoot for like a big home run winner. Uh -huh. I prefer to kind of just chip away at the market, um, little move here, little move there, and just repeatedly do that over time. Right. But now I have like a bunch of like sweet questions for everybody that are listening, like uh, to sweet the pot at the end of the interview. Uh, those are the questions that um, everybody wants to know when they're first starting. And uh, I don't want to call them newbies because they sometimes even, they even motivate me because when I hear, mm -hmm. hear the answers from somebody who's already successful, I tend to, okay, man, so I will have this kind of, you know, I imagine the future, like counting the money in my head. That's like, the things that you used to do and probably do sometimes as well right mm -hmm. now. So what would be your most profitable strategy? My or most the best profitable strategy for you. What would be the one that you like the most and what is the one that is most profitable if there are different ones, <laughs> if those two are not the same one? It, it's, it's tough. Cause again, I, I've, you know, in my experience, I've gotten away from, really defining strategies and just classify myself as just a, a pure price action trader. Cause I, I have the ability to do many different things in the markets, depending on the situation. I would say, however, um, I would say my favorite or my most profitable is a simple, what I like to call just a, a pullback trade. Um, so uh, trading, um, trading a, a, a retracement, and getting involved in the underlying direction of the trend. Uh, so a simple so like pullback trade. Getting, waiting for the price to get back to the kill zone, some kind of an entry type, and then... Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so it's price violating a level of structure. Um, let's say, let's oh, pretend the, okay. the, market is, the market is moving up. Let's say we violate a, a previous level of resistance. Um, and then let's, the let's, market... Let's check it out here. Let's check it out. For example, let's say that we have here move move here mm -hmm. uh move down here here did we violate it we did ah uh, well this is not a good example i think maybe this if, if you throw back to the left a little bit so right right on the, the left side oh of yeah screen. i can i see what so let's mean. yeah so let's say that you know we, we look at that this. the bullish trend on the far left yeah something like that where we come back into structure you can see a beautiful double bottom right there rsi goes oversold on the initial um low we come back to retest that level. We have RSI bullish divergence there. We can, we can have a stop loss right underneath that double bottom, which is it's a, yeah, a good indication yeah. of we know we're wrong right away. And then we can look for two things depending on, I wouldn't do this on Canada at this moment in time, but initial targets would be a retest of the, the previous level of resistance yeah. um, right up there. Yep. 
And then secondary targets would be an extension higher. Now, the extension really depends on the overall theme of the market. Sometimes it could be a very small extension to like a Fibonacci extension level. It could be a, a level of structure looking left. Um, in a really good situation, and this is only, I call these home run trades, it only happens maybe, you know, I catch maybe two or three a year, probably take maybe five or six a year, yeah. is when we have a situation like this where you're looking on the hourly right now, um, yeah. let's say the, the daily is also in a bullish trend and the next level of major resistance on the daily is oh, like I know what you 400 mean. pips away, yeah. Then I look to kind of just ride it up and then manage my stop loss where I can kind of trail that structure and see if we can get, as much as possible out of that move. And did you backtest are... all of this? You know, when you were looking, looking left, higher time frame. did you backtest all of this? Or and this kind of strategies where nothing, not everything is so specific. Mm -hmm. It's hard to create rules about, around it, isn't it? Yeah, and I back, I back tested, I back tested this style as really a counter trend strategy. It was more of what we call a CTS, combined technical scoring uh -huh. system, where it was the, the same concepts were used. But again, when I first started off, I wasn't necessarily a, a trend trader. I still, I still am not. As you see, I, I take targets at kind of a very conservative level um, where many followers would say like, hey, why don't you just take targets off at the very highs? I'm like, I just don't, I don't have that belief as a, as a counter trend trader at nature. So I back tested everything as a counter trend trader, and, and which, which may be very familiar with really both sides of the market, but especially things like double bottoms and, and reversal candles and reversal signals. And what I did as I matured or evolved as a trader was I noticed and I saw that I was able to take those counter trend approaches and use them in trend continue situations, uh, continuation situations, because this double bottom RSI diversions, if you were just to kind of take that double bottom and, and flip it upside down at resistance, that would be a beautiful reversal trade. Yep. And that's yeah. something that I would take for the longest time. So as I evolved as a trader, as I spent more time in the markets and, and just, you know, I, I always take notes, I always journal and, and these type of changes take years. They don't happen overnight. Um, I noticed that, hey, I can take a counter trend approach to trend continuation trading. The only difference is, again, how aggressively do I shoot for targets? Uh, and again, I'm pretty, pretty conservative with that. Oh, one question that I have mm -hmm. for you uh, would be how uh so your first obviously we work on our trading systems i suppose you still work on it and yeah. you're still fine tuning it so your first trading system that when you were managing money and you were returning two to three percent how many trades how many strategies what did you back test how long did you, did did it took for you to create one and uh for the one that you saw from me did, did, and um, how many hundreds trades how many hundred trades um, well, the, the, one, the one that I use when I was managing money is completely different than what I'm doing now. So that, was, that was slightly different. That was more of a, it was, it was less of a price action trading strategy and more of a, it was, in, was indicator-based as well. So I, I would get a read for the markets using price action, uh -huh. but there was also like, uh, you know, a moving average cross and this indicator and that indicator looking for, looking for signals. So that was a little bit, a little bit different. Um, but either way, I mean, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of trades um, were tested. I, I always like to go back to a minimum of 100 trades or a minimum of five years, depending on the time frame when I'm testing something. Yep. Yep. And I'll do that over, I'll do that over 10, 13 pairs. So you can imagine thousands of trades per strategy. And, and, and typically me, I'm not the best back tester. I, I tell the traders I work with now to think about everything you want to test before you back test it and do it all at once. I would typically test something and then halfway through my testing, I'd be like, I would notice something else. I'd be like, huh, what if I did this with stops? What if I did this with targets? What if I use this as an entry? And then I would go all the way back and retest it over again. Um, so I don't even know the, the thousands of trades I, I, I've tested, but definitely thousands and thousands of trades and then just time in the market as well. You know, I'm consistently in the yeah. market every single day looking at uh, actively trading, um, but also reviewing, reviewing my day, you know, going through charts for fun, just looking at moves that happen and, and really kind of playing the game like, okay, how could I have gotten involved in hindsight? Um, and that helps me kind of keep fresh ideas. You know, it, it, I may not get anything at first, but if I'm doing so for a month and I, and I have these notes that say, okay, well, this type of candlestick 
formed every time before reversal. Now it's like, oh, maybe that's something I should go back and test. And, and maybe that's a, a missing piece or the next thing to my trading strategy or system. Right. Okay, cool. Cool. Yeah, that's what, so for this system that I, I mean, for my bada beam, bada boom system, how I call it actually, mm -hmm. I backtested what here you can see 500 trades, but I actually backtested. That's not a lot. <laughs> that's nothing. Uh, this is just like after filtering and all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, I backtested what six pairs, three strategies per pair. Mm -hmm. So what 18 top 1800 trades plus 300 on for FTB on pound dollar and 300 mm -hmm. for FTB. So 2500. Roughly, mm -hmm. and now I'm currently backtesting ciphers. So, and I'm done with three pairs. So, I don't know, 3,000. <laughs> three, Lots. Yeah. A lot, a lot. Of, and I'm still not done. I need to add a swing strategy. I need to add a trend continuation. I need to add breakout patterns and all of that stuff. And I'm hoping that when I add all of that stuff, that I, I can minimize my risk, trade small, and make mm -hmm. like three. 4% per day or oh, per month. <laughs> yeah. So, but what, what is your, one of the questions also that kind of fits right here is, so what is your average yearly return and what is your average win ratio? Average win ratios is 55%. I, I've essentially been stuck there for, and I don't, I don't want to say stuck in a negative. I'm quite happy with that, but that's, it, that's been what it's been for the last, I don't know how many years. Uh, I've kind it's of accepted fine, the fact Who that, cares about win ratio? Oh, yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm, I'm quite fine with that. Um, my average return, and this really depends on if I hit a different level in my money management uh, position sizing strategy or not, yeah. Um, yeah. is about 40%. I, want, I, I was going to say like 30 to 60. Um, I had a 60% year once, but that was really an outlier. It, it, it well, happened. Last year, how much did you, 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 by the way, you owe me a video on that. I did so do that. Yeah. That's yeah. <laughs> so yeah. How, how, how big was your return last year? Last year was 33. I want to say I'm trying to find the sheet right now. If I have it. I think it's on oh, can you share it? Laptop. Maybe that would be a good thing. I don't think I have it on this computer. I have that on my laptop. Um, ah, if I let me, I have something. I think it's this year's stats, though. Um, Let's see. Yeah, yeah. I have I have two versions of this year's stats. Why? Is it, well, I, oh, I think I broke one. Do um, you have a swing? <laughs> swing or do you have a swing trading account and like a day trading one? Because I know that you're a swing trader, then and, and I know that it's very important to separate those accounts because on a swing account you can go short, and on a day trading you can be long, and both of those trades can actually win. But that's yeah, I'm yeah, I, I keep them separate. Um, yeah, it may, mainly because I, I just had one incident where I was in a very long swing trade on, uh, I believe it was Aussie dollar, where I was in, a, I was in a swing trade for about two months, and uh, prices it just went into consolidation. It was a pattern trade, and prices went sideways and went up and down in like a, a sideways channel. And I remember we were in a live room, and I, I want to say, I, mean, I could be wrong on this. I want to say it made like two hundred pips within the two weeks of just like it was like six or seven or eight pattern formations back to back to back from like the 15 or the five. And I just remember sitting there and I couldn't take any of them because I, I already had a yep. position on the higher time frame, and, and that's, that was when I kind of realized like, man, I, I can't either. I have to trade separate portfolios um, for day trading. Cause I was never really a day trader until the live room. I mainly just a swing trader. Um, but that's when I kind of realized, you know, what, what, what time frame would be a swing hour four plus, uh, yeah, so yeah, 60 minute up. Um, so mainly oh, the four hour. Up. Okay. Yeah, ma mainly the four hour. I, I dropped down to 60 as like a lower time frame if you wanted like a specific reason for entry. Uh -huh. uh, so trading mainly, would be higher time frame would be daily, trading would be hour four, and then you would look for double bottoms and some kind of an hour one. Yeah? Exactly, exactly, exactly. But I, be I believe, like, going back to your original question, I believe last year was like 33%. It wasn't the greatest year in the world, but it was, I, I mean, I'll, I'll take it. Don't, don't get me wrong. But yeah. it wasn't. It, in the back of my mind, I had that 60% year, and I know I shouldn't shoot for that because that's out of the norm. But in my, I kind of judge it. I kind of judge myself now off of, off of that, where it's like, and that's just the competitor in me saying that was my biggest return. I want to get that again, even if I sh even if it shouldn't be an expectation, and it's not an expectation. Um, but just the competitor in me is like, I did it once, so you can do um, it again. Yeah, and and that just kind of keeps me motivated. But 
at at heart, I know like I shouldn't get upset if I don't if I don't do that. But I always I always have a character to, to kind of shoot for. Yep, I understand. I well, I would be happy if I can average like forty. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I am. I'm, I mean, I'm with is, you. Yeah, this is that would be awesome. Well, the, well, the, all of that depends. I mean, you can you could do fifty with the ones with the same system if you, you used aggress more a little bit more aggressive slightly more aggressive money management yeah i remember doing um i'm not sure if it was a podcast or i, I did some example before and, and I, I cranked up the the multiplier and i was like 300 percent return yeah exactly and then it was like uh but i'm like i would never i would never take this because I, one bad drawdown and you know <laughs> i'm blowing 25 30 percent of my account like i don't i can't afford to do that at this Tell point. me Give me, give me a little trading session here for me. Sorry, guys, I have to chip in a little bit. So, <laughs> so this is my trading uh, account equity. Mm -hmm. uh, what are the, no, my risk settings are actually four here uh, because I'm trading, uh, yeah. So is this aggressive? Is this semi-aggressive? Is this, what kind of, what is this? I would say that's quite, I would say it's quite conservative. Um, okay, cool. cool. I, I tend to look at the, I still call it the Delta, but the, the, the profit trigger, anything under, anything under, anything above 50% of your starting account size, or let me take that back. No, 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 no. Hold on. That's, that's, no, that's not, I wouldn't say quite conservative. I take that back. That's, that's, that's pretty aggressive. 2,500. Yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty aggressive. Not, not in, I wouldn't say you're in a danger zone of, of, of getting any type of really, really wild swings, but um, I would say that's more on the aggressive side. The, the profit trigger, anything, anything less than half of your starting account, oh, okay. um, I kind of look at half as being like the very, very conservative mark. Anything more than half is like super conservative. Half is still really conservative because it's going to take a massive amount of time to I'm talking years, perhaps even to kind of hit that next level. Increase so, it, yeah. Yeah. So anything underneath that is is more aggressive. Now, just looking at your curve, it wasn't aggressive. It wasn't aggressive to the fact where you have like crazy wild swings up and down. That's when you know it's a a red flag. Yeah, no, it was like I had a four hundred four hundred profit trigger, but I'm not adding a lot. So I'm adding yeah, two. Yeah. If you were to go go put put in one hundred, see what that would do. And a lot of it's going to be based off your trading as well. So even that. Oh, you're... holy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And again, you're, you're, you're trading well. So it's, you don't have really, really wild swings in your equity. But for someone that has like wild drawdowns where they, they, they get on these massive hot streaks and these massive losing streaks, that's when you run the risk if you're being super aggressive to um, – really have these big wild swings when you're doing good, but these even wilder swings because you're increasing your account size just in time for a drawdown when you're doing poorly. So I think a lot of it has to do with, with the consistency of your trading. If, you know, my, mine is the same way. I don't really, aside from what, 2016, the beginning of 2016, where I took like a 17% drawdown, I typically don't really have any wild swings in my equity curve. It's similar to yours where it's just kind of boring, but going in the right direction. Um, so I could personally afford to be, to be more aggressive if I wanted to. Um, I'm just very risk adverse, um, which is the reason I'm not. Well, you know what? I keep looking at this after one year of, of work and I, I actually need to, Prove my. I I need to see this slide because looking at this, I, that means that I would make like twenty five percent with just this system that I created, with mm -hmm. this conservative settings. I take this, and this is with money management, man, in yeah. five years. Like this is forty percent overall if I compound the interest. This is crazy. That and that's that that's 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 the difference. If if you can become a consistently profitable trader. And again, manage your risk and, and just, you know, follow your rules and all that fun stuff. Adding a position sizing strategy, that's the icing on the cake. Because you can you can take what you're already doing. That's not the icing, good. that's everything, man. <laughs> yeah, you, you can take what you're doing good and you can make it great. And I, and I say the icing on the cake because, you know, maybe there are some, some health nuts out there, but I'm not eating a cupcake unless it has icing on it. Right? That's just that's just me. Right. Uh, yeah. However, I know what you mean. <laughs> however, right? I'm also just not eating a tub of icing by itself, right? I don't know. If, I don't know if it's 
taste good or if, it, if I would just feel bad uh -huh. about it. So I need something for that icing to sit on. And that's the, that's the consistency of your trading. It, it's, it's, the, it's the cupcake. And then the icing is the part that we really want. Um, and that's the part that's going to go on top of things once you're already consistent. And, but again, people want to skip the first part. People want just straight the icing first and, and yeah. you know, stick to their stomach doing that. Okay, cool. That brings us after an hour and a half of our session. I have just a few more questions right. from our listeners. I'll say, so what is your biggest winner and what was your biggest loser? So not the biggest drawdown, but the biggest single winner and the biggest loser. Funny you mentioned that. I just, I just shared that on Twitter the other day. And I, I oh, was seriously? Kind of making, yeah, I was, I'm, in a, I'm in a Facebook group called, uh, from uh, Stephen Burns called uh, Rich Trader, New Trader. And I was, uh, uh -huh, okay. and we were, I, was good, I usually don't spend a lot of time in these groups, but I, you know, I respect Stephen. I think he brings a lot of value to the trading community. He'd be yep. a very nice person to interview as well. I, I, I had the pleasure of interviewing him. I would um, like to interview him as well. Yeah, I mean, re reach out to him uh, and, and feel free to name drop me. He's, he is, um, and you know me, I don't really do interviews on my podcast, um, but he is someone that I look up to in the industry and, and he was an amazing interview. And, and definitely feel free if you reach out to him, say like, hey, um, friends of Akil, just wanted to know. And, and he was a very down to earth guy. We'll um, use that link, man. We'll use that link. Yeah. <laughs> Thank but you. He, uh, he, he asked the question about uh, same thing, kind of what's your biggest biggest loser, most memorable loser, biggest winner. And I shared it on there and I shared it on Twitter and I was having fun this morning. Like, how come my biggest loser got double the likes? Oh, I my saw that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, my, biggest, my biggest winner came on New Zealand dollar. And I don't know if this is my, I still think it is my biggest. It was a 600 pip trade total. Like, wow. I think, I think 600 my, pip. But between, between target one and target two. Target one was 200. Target two was 400. What was um, that daily? No, uh, four hour had to be. This was back, I think back in, I want to say like 2009. It was, it, would, it was an advanced pattern formation. And it was the biggest one, I think. I, I still think to this day, I don't think I have a trade bigger than that. Um, at least unless it was during like a phase where I was just doing weird stuff and, and blew it later. Um, but what was big about it for me is that it was the first trade I ever saw through to targets. And it was, it was during my training with, with uh, Jason Stapleton. And I remember taking the trade and this is when I was consistently taking targets early because I just wanted profit, right? Can't go loot, can't go broke. You're taking profit on that. Fun stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it was a trade that triggered on like a Thursday and we knew it was a big trade. It was triggered on like a Thursday. It was up by like 50 pips on a Friday. And I remember I wanted to take, profit out and I didn't because he was you know stick to your rules and all this stuff discipline I'm like okay I'm gonna prove this guy wrong and I remember he, we came back Monday and the trader Monday or Tuesday um, and the trade exploded to target once and it was like a 200 pip winner and I was like wow this is crazy and I remember half the live room took profits early because he was like how about the New Zealand dollar how, how much did you guys get from it and everyone's like 50 pips He's like, what? He's like, why? He's like, we closed it down before the weekend because we got scared. And I was one of the few that held on to it. Um, and that was kind of the first kind of- Were you proud, huh? I was very proud, yeah. That was, that was the first time I did that. Um, and I was rewarded for it. I'm, I'm glad I was. I, I wonder how it would affect me if the trade ended up bouncing backwards. I probably would have kept breaking my rules for a long time because I'd be like, this is what happens when you don't take profits out. Um, but I was very proud. It was, it was a, it was a game changing experience. And then later that week it went on to hit secondary targets, which were another like 400 pips away. And it was like, this is, I'm like, this is why we follow our rules. You know, Jason gave this big speech. This is, this is what discipline gets you. Patience pays all that fun stuff. And I was on the yeah. right side. Of that. <laughs> so that was my, that was my biggest win. My, my biggest loss. I don't remember the pip amount, but it was on, it was either the Aussie dollar or the Aussie Canada. And this was, I was on like a two month hot streak. Um, and it was a trading idea from Jason Stapleton that he, he shot in. It was, it was on the Aussie Canada or Aussie dollar. It was like all time highs. So we were, at the all, we were trading at the all time highs. And he was like, this is the perfect risk reward trade. Because if we're, if we're wrong, there's like 200, 300 pips of risk, which was on a daily chart or a weekly chart. So it wasn't that, wasn't that big in comparison. So if we're wrong, there's like 300 pips of risk. If we're right, there's like 1,000 pips of profit. And wow. I'm all fired up off of like, maybe it wasn't 1,000, but like 800, something big. Um, and I had no business trading the weekly, so just, you know, but 
I was, it was at the end of a hot streak. I was feeling myself. I, you know, I couldn't lose because I had won for like the last two months. And this was a trade of the lifetime. And I was like, okay, the risk reward works. I, really, I didn't care about my actual risk management position size. The risk reward, right? Risk, risk 300 to gain like 1,000 any day. And I remember taking the trade and it lost within like a day. So like wow. the quickest, quickest, you know, I think ended up taking like 600 pips because, you know, it took a full loss. Um, and it, it oh, basically crap, yeah. ate, ate, ate up the profits from the previous two months. And, uh, and that's, why, that's why you were so happy. <laughs> found again the other day, Gartley, I think, was it uh, hit targets one fairly quickly and you minimized. Yeah. You, you couldn't lose anymore because your trail stops as well, right? Yeah, yeah, it was it was getting that risk off the table. That was that's the yeah. biggest thing for me. Um, but the all whatever Aussie can all do that was just a dumb trade. It, it wasn't a trade that was in my plan. It wasn't a time frame I was supposed to be trading. It wasn't a risk that I was supposed to be accepting. It's just everything was bad about that trade. I was just I was caught up in the moment. My trading mentor, someone who I looked up to, someone who I still look up to, was taking it. He gave it his blessing, saying this is like one of the best trading opportunities he's seen in his lifetime. And I just fell victim to it. And for him, you know, it was probably a good trade for him. I w it was a good trade for him. Yep. Yep. Um, it just wasn't because he came back the next day. It was like, well, hey, sometimes they lose. And I'm like, end of the world. What do you mean sometimes they lose? I just blew two months of profit. And I was about to get all fired up. And I realized, like, well, because I'm not supposed to be taking this trade. He'll get a trade on the weekly, you know, sometime down the road that will make up for it. I won't because yeah, I don't, I don't trade right. that time frame. I was trading four hours and whatnot. So it was – it was a learning experience and, and glad it happened earlier in my career. And Akil, mm -hmm. one final thing. All right. What do you think it's single most important thing in trading? What would be the message that we, you would like to listeners of this interview of hour and a half content <laughs> be? Do you want the single, I know what, what would be for me because that what, change my trading but what what is it from the experienced guy who has more than 10 years of games in his legs in his that's the saying here in croatia at least i i would say this um and if, if you if you were to ask me probably like a year from now it might change but i would say that focus on focus on learning how to trade not what to trade I think a lot of traders waste a lot of time trying to focus on what to trade, what strategy, what system, what this, what that, kind of the, the quick answer. Um, where if you focus on how to trade, just a, a common knowledge of, of reading a price chart and, and deciphering the market, you can create whatever strategy you want. And, and, and no matter what strategy you trade, whether it's a, a moving average cross strategy or an advanced pattern formation strategy, support and resistance, pullback trading, whatever it may be, the basic elements of, of understanding how to read a price chart will come into play. So I think if a trader really focuses their time and energy on just the basics, not, not what the trade, but just how the market moves, what is support and resistance, what does this candlestick mean, you know, how to read a price chart, I think they can adapt that um, and, and be better at any trading strategy that they eventually go on to trade. All right. Yeah, I can fully agree. Focus on, uh, on the process, not, not on the outcome, as you know, yeah. to say, I would also add one more thing, back test the hell out of everything yeah. <laughs> that helped me, that will help you. And just not, not software backtesting. Don't use any software. Manually backtest. It's yeah, moving yeah, yeah. work. Long, you will spend a lot of time in, in front of your charts. I lost a little bit of my right eye eyesight. So that happens as well. But I, it, it will, the doctor said it, it, will, it will be better with time. I just need to rest my eyes. And mm -hmm. I'm planning to rest them after 2022. <laughs> uh, but with that being said, guys, I feel one more time. Big thank you. It was hour and a half of pure pleasure speaking with you, man. I'm looking forward to meet you in person as well to have grab some beers with you. And guys, yeah. thank you very much for watching this until the end of this video. If you like the content, if you like to see more of this content, you know, I got to do the, whatever YouTuber would do, Akili, you do that as well. Click that like button, share this, <laughs> click that subscribe button and make sure to smash that bell button so that you can help the almighty YouTube algorithm to rank this video much, much higher than it is currently. And so that much, much, many more people can see it. 
Also, I'll do another plug for uh, Akil and Jason and Tier 1 Trading. If you're looking to for somebody who is who is willing to help you at a level where nobody else is, join Tier 1. Those guys can definitely help you. Akil, thank do you, you so want to say something? No, uh, just thank you. I, I love what you're doing here. Um, I look forward to continuing to watch your content. I don't get a lot of time to watch content, but when I'm on the road, I, I try to put it on when I can. And I, I think you're, just, you're doing a great job of showing what the reality of trading looks like. And I, I think that's very important. If people know what they're getting into and can see real people doing it. It just helps it helps us avoid some of the people that fall for the traps that the rest of the internet is, is sharing. So keep what up the I great say? work. I learned from the best man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's pause this. I have to stop it. Let's render it and talk to you soon. Thank you. Yep. No problem. Thanks. Bye-bye. Hey, take care.